Erdogan, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Istanbul. Welcome to the first, and hopefully, almost certainly not the last, TEDx Silk Road conference. Nothing is simple. Nothing happens in isolation. All things are connected. So in the best traditions of storytelling, let us begin at the beginning. The reality and the history of the Silk Road, and there is no one road. Rather, there is a term used to describe a network of inter interlinking trade routes by land and sea that extended more than 4,000 miles, 6,500 kilometers, depending on where you come from, from Europe and the Mediterranean, through North Africa, Egypt, East Africa and the Red Sea, Ottoman Turkey, ancient Persia, Afghanistan, the Caucasus, to coastal India, China, the surrounding seas, and Southeast Asia. So apologies to the Australians, I think they're the only ones we missed. <laughs> Just as many of these places conjure up exotic impressions of faraway and precious lands, many of the goods traded along the Silk Road were also valuable and exotic. China traded silk, teas, and porcelain. India traded spices, ivory, textiles, precious stones, and pepper. The Roman Empire, which eventually moved eastward and do not forget included most of what is now modern Turkey, exported gold, silver, fine glassware, wine, oil, carpets, and jewels. Of course, there were less noble trades, too. Slaves and drugs were traded as well. Not all deals were fair. Not all traders were honest. And where people moved, contagious diseases sometimes followed. But the network of the Silk Road carried more than just people and goods. Technologies, religions and philosophies, cultural exchanges, languages, art, all the inevitable consequences of human interaction. The movement along the Silk Routes was a continuous journey and a constant series of encounters, influences, and experiences. Our own languages reflect the influences of those who moved from region to region, and words have become transposed from one country to another, becoming assimilated into everyday speech without the users even realizing where they came from. Today, the Silk Road has taken on a magical, mysterious, and romantic quality, the stuff of stories and adventure. But it remains a potent symbol of human exchange, of progress, and of discovery. And more than that, it is becoming an increasingly tangible phenomenon again. And as it did in its original form, it is bringing innovation and change. Modern mass travel has made the world more accessible, both to the explorer and to the trader. No longer limited by our physical borders and boundaries, we are again moving around the world in pursuit of the best deals and the most interesting experiences. Yet some things have changed significantly. We all want and need things that come from somewhere else. These could be natural resources, manufacturing capacity, craftsmanship, educational excellence. So some of the old exchanges can still be found mixed with the new. And actually, the geography of the world is much the same. So the land routes and waterways that still carry a large proportion of our goods are little changed. Interestingly, therefore, in a globalizing world, the Silk Road is just as valid as it has ever been. A few weeks ago, I was at the Eurasia Rail exhibition here in Istanbul, and I heard senior figures talk about plans to create a rail link that would reach from Beijing to London, through the countries of Central Europe into the heartland of Western Europe, retracing the silk routes and extending them. And that vision was not some idealistic dream to recreate a venerable phenomenon. This vision is a very practical plan to link countries and communities 
that are of value to one another for trade. This is a very physical link to our trading partners and to the past that was the ancient Silk Road. But today we have a new dimension. We can augment that physical link. We no longer need to travel ourselves or to send our agents to connect with other parts of the world. In the age of the internet, of electronic communication, of the World Wide Web, we are emailing, blogging, tweeting and Skyping our way across the world. E-commerce is again linking trading partners that were once connected by the Dow routes and the camel caravans of the Silk Road. In many ways, the physical connections born so many centuries ago are now manifest in the electronic connections we establish. The goods may travel by the old routes, but they also travel by air as well as land and sea. Communications are faster, more direct and more reliable, complementing our own notions of a physical path with a vibrant and essential layer of immediate communication and direction. As we look at the Silk Road of today, within the context of our increasingly globalized business world, the signs of true integration become more and more apparent. The headquarters of the Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank is in London. Through mergers and acquisitions, what was once, once British steel is now owned by Tata of India. The developed Western markets have turned to the East for low-cost, large-scale production and, in some cases, to outsource services such as call centers. Oil and gas pass from the Central Asian republics, Iraq and the Gulf states to Europe by a variety of pipelines as well as by sea. There are projects to create fiber optic cable links between Asia and Europe. But also, as in the past, the Silk Road of today moves more than goods alone. Once again, it is a mechanism for interchange of people, ideas and concepts. Students and academics can move from one center of educational excellence to another. There is collaboration in science, medicine, and technology. There are groundbreaking exchanges in arts, design, architecture, and fashion. And yes, there are also the challenges that arise when political and cultural systems and the values that underpin them collide and compete. For all our advances, there are still inequalities, misunderstandings, and intolerance that centuries have neither resolved nor diminished. Before I conclude, I want to say, and I should say, a few words about the unique situation of Turkey, and indeed of Istanbul. More than just a stop on the, on the Silk Road, Istanbul has always been a trading center, a hub, a meeting point, a fulcrum and a microcosm, somewhere where the old is respected and valued, the new tried, tested and embraced, where cultures merge without losing their identity and where you depart richer than you arrived, sometimes literally, sometimes figuratively. And in this century, Istanbul is becoming a transport hub that connects most of the countries of the Silk Road. If all roads used to lead to Rome, Thanks to Turkish airlines, almost all air routes seem to lead to Istanbul. So in conclusion, the Silk Road of today means connectivity, real and virtual, commercial, cultural, scientific, academic, religious, political, economic, but above all, human. If we are to benefit from this, we must travel with an open mind. We must seize the opportunities, we must be flexible, curious, and communicative. Modern technologies make the mechanics of travel and connectivity easy. The challenge for us is to look for the best in the world and in ourselves. Thank you. <laughs>